This is education, so everybody pays attention to instructions like the teacher. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Buenos dias a todos. My name is Ashley Marroquin, and I am honored to give you the official welcome to the first ever Parlier Unified School District State of the District Address. We have been through quite an experience this last year, and we all had to streamline our communication with all of you in order to keep everyone posted. While it is customary for the welcome to the State of the District Address to be given by the designated communications officer, we are still working on ours and Dr. Guerrero saw it fitting that you put a face to the voice that, most often, that you most often heard in our robocalls since COVID-19 forced us to close our schools. I no longer take it personally that people tell me that they started blocking my calls. Yes, I am that Ashley, and I welcome you this morning. <laughs> At this moment, I want to recognize our members of the school board who are present this morning. President, and if you can stand when I say your name, President Eric Molina, who, will be here, who you will be hearing from shortly. <laughs> Vice President Joseph Vasquez. <laughs> and Clerk Elena Gonzalez, Trustee Martin Mares, and Trustee Elizabeth Tienda were not able to join us this morning, but I am sure they are with us in spirit. We also want to um, say a, a welcome to our elected officials who are probably joining us virtually. And we want to say a good morning to Mayor Alma Beltran and City Manager Sonia Hall. We also want you to meet the members of the district's executive leadership team who are present. present. Assistant Superintendent of Curriculum and Instruction, Dr. Ruben Diaz. <laughs> Chief Business Officer, Andrea Affronti. <laughs> Director of Human Resources, Scott Griffin. <laughs> Director of Classified Projects, Renee Rodriguez. And our other member, Director of Student Support Services, Antonio Aguilar, could not be with us today as well. <laughs> and of course, our district's daily operations would not happen if it weren't for our site leaders. Benavides Elementary Principal, Leanne Rodriguez, and Learning, oh, I'm sorry. And Learning Director, Diego Moreno. Berletic Elementary Principal, Cristina Aguilar, and Learning Director, Julissa Mon Montalvo. <laughs> Chavez Elementary Principal, Sylvia Gomez, and Learning Director, Mariano Collazo. <laughs> Martinez Elementary Principal, Veronica Caulfield, and Learning Director, Lupe Leja. Parlier Junior High School, Principal Julissa Alvarado, and Learning Director Corina Rivera. <laughs> Parlier High School Principal Dr. Sara Soria, and Learning Directors Lamar Lopez and Javier Martinez. San Joaquin Valley High School Principal, Israel Almendares. <laughs> this morning, you will hear about the wonderful things that are going on in Parlier Unified School District. And you will also gain some insight into those that are planned from our superintendent, Dr. Altagracia Gracie Guerrero. But first, our board president, Mr. Eric Molina, has a message for you. Ladies and gentlemen, President Molina.
Thank you, Ashley. Good morning to you all. On behalf of the entire Parlor Unified School Board of Trustees, I welcome you this morning. We are pleased to stand with you in person amidst many challenges that continue to go on as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. Each of us here today has an opportunity to make an impact on the lives of our students, and your participation today means that you believe in them and in us, and have a vested interest in the success of our district. Thank you so much for your support and for the many ways in which you have and will continue to partner with us for the sake of our entire community. Before I formally introduce Dr. Guerrero, I would like to share our vision as far as when we, we as a board, we're looking for a superintendent. In the middle of the pandemic, we were kind of a little um, worried because we didn't know where, where we were going to get a superintendent from. But the search went on, and what we looked for was somebody who was had success at the previous district, who could relate to our students, and who also had success with EL, and they sent us that person. So when she got here, we gave her a list of things that we needed, that we wanted, and we gave her our vision. And from that, she's come up with Vision 25. So I'd like to proudly introduce our superintendent, Dr. Atagracia Guerrero, and she's gonna tell you guys, uh, tell you guys a little bit of our, our vision. And um, just a little back, uh, background on our vision was um, Mr. Vasquez, he talked about a 10 year vision and we wanna know what we're gonna look in 10 years. So we said, yeah, let's do it, 10 years. So right now is the first five years of that 10 year vision. So um, I'm gonna cut it short now and introduce our superintendent, Dr. Guerrero, thank you. Okay, this thing should be on. Okay, good. Um, so thank you, Mr. Molina, for uh, that. So talk about stress, right? You know, uh, we have a group of people who are telling me not just what uh, we need to be able to do in one year, not what we need to do in five years, but they're going beyond that and saying, what is Parlier USD looking like in the next 10 years? Let me just sit back and then reply, well, you know, I, I got a 30-year mortgage, so you're underselling yourselves, right? <laughs> uh, so uh, definitely a lot can be accomplished. And I think, you know, just the uh, fact that this happened, uh, you know, I have um, with me a group of individuals who you give them a vision, you give them something to, um, uh, do and they deliver and boy do they deliver so I wanted to first be able to uh, thank the people behind the uh, state of the district address I wouldn't have been able to do it with uh, our, uno our unofficial uh, robocaller uh, Ashley Marroquin who's my right hand person so thank you so much uh, Lydia Martinez also has this vision of wanting things to look just right and she will be able to deliver. So Lydia, I'm so excited and happy that you were able to pull through. I mean, you know, with last minute texts and everything else, uh, you'll be able to see just a little bit of the details that has gone into this. So definitely, and of course, uh, our custodial staff who's able to help us uh, set up our um, folks in the nutrition department who also were involved with being able to get all the food you were able to do. So I, um, I say that because though I certainly acknowledge the, uh, the stress and just the faith that I am of the district, the superintendent, there's this saying of that we always stand on the shoulders of others. And boy, am I pleased of the shoulders that are so strong that are able to hold me up. So all of our staff, all of our family members, and for them, I wanna be able to start with this round of applause. If you can join me with that, please. 
And of course, if anything goes wrong, we have our tech team here who have been uh, so uh, uh, gracious and uh, helpful. Anything from uh, hyperlinking something in the presentation to just telling me how to turn this thing on. And so uh, definitely I want to be able to recognize them because they assured me that this was going to go on without a hitch. So thank you. <laughs> And I, and I do want to acknowledge Brendan Herman. He is here. I didn't see him uh, walk in. He actually snuck in. He is representing the Office of Congressman David uh, Valadao. So thank you so much for being here as well. We appreciate it. I, I thought he was one of our high school students. You know, uh, I hope I'm, I age, continue to age as gracefully as you are. So. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. So I just wanna be able to kind of say a disclaimer that this is not your typical state of the, of the district address. But then again, what has been typical in our year, right? So usually it's a, a sum of everything that has happened in the year and you highlight, you know, just different things, state scores, uh, sports championships, everything, building new things. And of course we are in the middle of something that we just unveiled, uh, was it a couple of weeks ago? Last week, it seems like ages ago already, right? So we have the NPR here, which we're so excited to have, and thank you, Ms. Gomez, for being a gracious host. And not only that, but look, she has a hidden talent of floral design, that is all Ms. Gomez. So thank you so much. So I, have. Uh, for those of you who have gotten to know me, you know that I like simple things. And usually if they fit in three, in, in categories of three, of three things, the better, right? So this presentation is no different. It's arranged in three sections. One, we're gonna tell you about our district, who we are, what we've done, and that's in two, what has happened this year, 2020, 2021. And then we go with what was said earlier, what are we looking like to do uh, as we plan and go forward for the next five years. So it's who we are, what's happened this year, and what do we expect to happen because we're gonna work for that in the next five years. However, with a certain disclaimer that uh, there's a, a joke or a saying out there that a sure way to make God laugh is to show them your plan. Right, and of course, this last year of the pandemic, if you had told us that two years ago, you're kidding, we're not gonna close schools for a year and uh, we're not gonna have to wear a mask and boy, were we surprised, right? So take it with a grain of salt. This is what we want to be able to do. This is what I know our staff can be able to do. This is what I know our community will be able to support. However, as one of our uh, student board members says, life happens right so we'll see what we're able to do here i do want to be able to acknowledge that nothing nothing that i will talk about will be will be possible if it wasn't for the support of these five individuals um people like to say that being a superintendent is not a political job but boy is it right and i would not be able to uh pursue this five-year mission, and in the back, we're also working on a 10-year mission if it wasn't for these five individuals who collectively approve, suggest, make decisions for all of us here. And I have to tell you, those individuals, not just the ones who hired me, but all the individuals there really have one thing in common regardless of our experiences, regardless of our own philosophies, we have one thing in common, that we want to be able to do the best for kids. And when I tell you that our discussions of that way, those are it. So I know that it hasn't been easy, especially through distance learning, just like you know with our kids, virtual meetings. And I will be sharing information about just the collective work that our board members have also done. So I know that Ashley recognized them earlier, but I did uh, uh, not want to be able to um, leave them out because I could not do, this plan is not gonna happen if we don't have the support of all those five. And they are here for the right reasons. 
and we're going to continue to be um, uh, going forward making the best decisions for kids. So here we are, we are part year. We have, as of noon yesterday, we had enrolled 3,444 students, and we do have our seven schools. You met our amazing leaders earlier, and uh, boy, are they up to the task, right? Especially with all the updates that we needed to have that almost changed from one week to the next, and they were able to, um, do just what needed to be done to keep our students and our staff safe. Uh, so certainly uh, different things have resumed. I uh, was happy to be able to participate about five years this, this week because we had our San Joaquin Valley graduation, which was, which was just so moving. Uh, we also had our eighth grade awards ceremony. And then, of course, we have the firework ending to the graduation of our high school students uh, just the other day. So, and here we are being able to celebrate that. So that's us. We're small but mighty. And definitely uh, what is going to be known. You know, and I, I like to say that we have to be able to put it out in the universe because now it's out there and we can get it back, right? We're going to claim it. We're claiming that we are the gem in the Central Valley. So we'll come back to that as we progress in the next five years because that's out there, we can't get it back. We also have people and our organization is a people organization. We have 444 full or part-time staff and out of those, 178 are teachers. Uh, so definitely uh, different roles and, uh, roles and responsibilities, but collectively, we, like the board, also have that one thing in common, that we keep students at the center of every decision. And if we don't, someone will call us out on it and bring us back to reality that we are here for kids. And every decision that we make is to be able to do what's best for them, what they deserve, or entrust in us to be able to do. So, remember my categories, right? My first uh, uh, section, focus. So who are we? What is it that we're trying to do? And I have to, you know, for that, there's also a saying that the shortest distance between two people is a story. So this is our story. Uh, almost 10 months ago, I have not been on the job, not 10 months. It's coming up at the end of this month. My first official day was August 26th. It wasn't supposed to be until September 1st. But then when um, I was named, they said, hey, can you go ahead and start the day after the board approves? Sure, we can do it. So that was August the 26th. So then at the time uh, when I interviewed, I uh, also presented the board with my entry plan. And the entry plan outlined what my scope of work would be for the first three months. And so as part of that, I needed to be able to do um, sessions with people, with stakeholders, to be able to hear them out. I knew no one here in Parlier, no one. So everyone I met, and I, I have to say that I don't think a week went by when I first moved here that I went from Texas or with ties to Texas that then led me to say that if you've seen my car, by the way, I keep my cars for at least 10 years and it still has the Texas license plate. And so I said, you know what? I'm not even gonna change the license plate. Now, I will deny that if you go out there and you turn me in, right? Because I have no idea what the process that I'm supposed to do. But I think it was that Benavides in one of my visits that the office um, uh, clerk there said, you know what they call Parlier? They call Parlier Little Texas. Well, talk about a God wink, right? Talk about a sign. I am where I'm supposed to be. So as part of this lesson and learn sessions, took notes and saw what parents uh, were telling me, what staff was telling me, what administrators were telling me, certainly what the board was telling me, and uh, community members, stakeholders. And so that went on uh, from August all the way to the end of October. Uh, in, in between that, I met with the board to be able to set my goals. Then as part of that session, I presented to them the goal alignment that I had done as a result of everything that I had heard from my stakeholders and also what was in place, right? 
I'm always, uh, I always look at what's in place because if it's not broken, don't fix it, right? So I looked at the goals that the former superintendent had, the LCAP goals, and what the community was telling me. I didn't find an alignment there, right? The superintendent goals were not aligned to the LCAP goals, and then I was hearing different things from the community. So I said, we need to be able to align it. It's, it's, something's off. Uh, and so that led to the development of not only my superintendent goals that, um, uh, that the board has for me, but also uh, aligning that which we have now that the same three areas of focus or the same three areas of focus with the LCAP as well. And of course, uh, our site principals are taking that further and being able to align their SPSAs to those particular goals. So we're all working with those same three goals. And then, um, so the work was done in the fall of 2020. Uh, every month we met with the, the administration and went through that collectively so that we could be able to go through the same process. And then came a mid-year progress review with my board so that I can be able to give them an update of what, I have, what we have been doing up to then. And so that brings us now to next week that we're gonna add the last half of what we have been doing so that I can be able to say that certainly this will be part of it, but what else has happened uh, throughout the year. So that will be happening sometime next week as well. So I mentioned that the, and I don't wanna say lack of alignment, but I just didn't see a pattern. And I'm a math person, so I definitely wanna be able to see some patterns there that I can pick up. I wanted to be able to explain it to people. You know, there's always a reason behind doing something. Uh, so I categorized the different input that I was getting. And I got input that was related to student achievement, uh, dealt with staffing and climate, and also communication. You know, so uh, as I prepared this presentation, I really debated whether I should include our student achievement there. Now, those numbers look good, 78%, 86% if it was the opposite. Those are the numbers of the kids who are not meeting standards or could be close to meeting standards, but bottom line, they're not meeting standards. Again, a disclaimer because this is 2019, uh, uh, 2019 data. It's old data already because we don't have any other data to be able to replace it. And we were reclassifying 1% over English language learners. So we're about 52% of uh, official identification of English language learners, but I think we may, may be closer to perhaps a 60%. I also heard, uh, you know, um, it, it used to be funny at the beginning, you know, uh, people would say, yeah, you are the fifth superintendent in six years. And you know, I'll be talking to people, oh yeah, because you're the fifth superintendent in six years, and you're the fifth superintendent in six years. And, it is what it is, right? That's a fact. So that was an issue that also came up. We need um, ownership, and ownership would only happen if people know that we are in this for the long haul. Hence, the five-year plan, hence the 10-year plan, and yes, the 30-year mortgage that I signed, right? Uh, so then, how does that go along with trust? Right, so if I don't believe you're gonna be here long enough, why make the investment, right? And then of course, um, lack of accountability, holding people accountable for what we're expected to do, knowing that people will be able to perform and do if we know you're gonna stick around, if we know this is for real. So we'll come back to that in just a little bit. And of course, with all that, communication. Um, there was this notion of there's backroom deals going on, and I had never, I mean, I think I've heard of that in the aspect of, you know, those old time poker games that people would go through a Chinese restaurant and go through like a back room to do something. That's the vision that I had in my head. But, you know, the, nobody tells us what's going on. And I think now people would say, if this lady sends me another email telling me an update, I'm just going to scream. Uh, and then how do we standardize so that we can all know what's, what's going on in the sense that my expectations are everyone's expectations as well. And of course, along with that comes, let's have an equitable family and community outreach that is consistent. So we have worked on doing a strategic 
um, communication plan that also involves being able to communicate with our family and our stakeholders. This is part of that communication outreach. So then what do we do with that information, right? So then I wanted to be able to say, okay, so these are the three categories that are screaming out. How does that go hand in hand with setting the goals and directions for the district? So people were concerned about student achievement, as am I. So then what do we want to do in that aspect? We wanna have accomplished students, right? Knowing that I know that a test does not define my kids but we need to be able to set them up with the skills so they can be able to accomplish anything that they want to be able to do. Whether they want to go into construction, by all means, have them be able to read those plans and be able to deliver so that the structures that they build do not fall. If they want to be a doctor and be able to cure and be able to find, as we have known, the pandemic brought a lot of science and research out, right? Whatever it is that they want to be able to do. And of course, you see our goal there, which is the same one again that's in the LCAP, and of course, it's part of my goals. We wanted to look at staffing and climate. So that became, how do, we, how, how do we have environments that are supportive of all, not just students, but staff? So that also evolved, and you'll be able to see in a cycle of continuous improvement that we're all growing. And as part of the evaluation process, it's not an, I got you. It is an, I got you, in the sense that we're here to support and grow because ultimately your kids are gonna benefit. And communication. There's a lot of talk about engaging, but engaging, engagement only goes so far. We want our community to be empowered. We want our parents to be empowered so that they do what they do best. They parent and they instill in their students the value of uh, hard work, of ethics, so they can be able to perform at the school with that character being built. So we have accomplished students, we have our supportive environment, and we have our empowered community. So I'll be asking you to memorize six phrases. These are half of those phrases that you'll be asked to memorize, right? So what are we about in Parlier US, uh, USD? We're about accomplished students, having supportive environments, and having an empowered community to be able to partner with us. And of course, that goes with our overarching core value. We're gonna be student-centered. I mentioned earlier that my board wants to do what's best for students. We're gonna be student-centered. Everyone, students, staff, and their community will support and will contribute to our learning, because we're learning every day as well teaching and leading environment. And that doesn't happen just on Fridays, Mondays, maybe Wednesdays. That happens every day where effort will be required and expected. So we're student-centered, it requires everyone, and it has to be it's work that needs to be done every day. So that leads me to the next part. We're about every student, everyone, every day. And you are my marketers. You are my people who are going to be able to take this vision forward to the people that you know, to the people that may have not a so good image of Perlier USD. So in your tables, you should have a sticker or a set of stickers. Take one for yourself and perhaps take one for your friend and you can do what I did. I put mine on my laptop. If you take hikes or go jogging, you can put it on your um, uh, water bottle or you may be able to, if you're old school still that has a calendar agenda, you can put it on there. Put it anywhere you want. This is to be able to market who we are because we're about every student, everyone, and every day. So uh, if we do decide to change a design in, in the future or the colors, you'll certainly be the first to be able to get an updated sticker. So please pass the word around. You know, we couldn't be able to do that without you all. So not only are you serving to spread our voice, but we also have really strategic partners. And remember, we focus on three areas, on delivering accomplished students, being able to have a supportive environment, and also have an empowered community. But for that, just like setting this up, we couldn't do it alone. We, all, we have to be able to have some partners. So I am so pleased to be able to partner 
in these three areas with folks who are in it for the right reasons. So I do wanna be able to take time to recognize in each of those areas as will become the custom in years to come in state of the district addresses to be able to acknowledge our partners in those areas. This particular year, we're uh, taking the time to acknowledge, first of all, VROP. They do amazing things with our students at the high school level. We're able to provide career options for students. We just had a celebration of kids who graduated as candidates to be able to uh, have the certification as a nursing assistant. You know, so definitely our, our kids are graduating from high school with a career already in mind. I was nowhere near that when I was 18 years old. And for that, we have VROP to thank. So I would like to welcome, please, uh, the superintendent of VROP, Mr. Fabricio Lofaro, if you can come up. And if you can say a couple of words, please. We have just a little token of appreciation for you. Wow. Thank you for everything you. you do, your staff does, uh, anything. You know, as parents, whoever does good things for our kids or whoever is nice to our kids and kind to our kids, you can do no wrong because you are good to our kids. And I have 3,444 kids and he's good to my kids. So thank you so much for doing that. In, uh, did you want to take a picture? And you have a mic there. If you can say some words, please. Well, uh, thank you, Dr. Guerrero. Uh, first of all, I always say uh, we can't do this job by ourselves. It's always a partnership, and the more partnership we can put together to run the program that we do to support your students, the better we're going to be. And that's, that's what really has been for, for us with Parla Unified. Um, a lot of work that goes into it, but it's a lot of reward um, with the high school, with Mr. Iniguez, and everybody that's been involved in the, in the process, I really appreciate, and the board, the support that we get for, to continue and expand the programs. So um, again, Dr. Guerrero, I look forward to do this for many, many years and continue to expand and improve, and uh, whatever we need to continue to do for Pali Unified, we will do. Thank you. I am not sure, I have my glasses on, but you know when you get older, you can see far or not. So I'm not sure if uh, a representative from United Health Centers is here. They were supposed to be here to accept this award. I will say kind, huh? Okay, so then we'll go to Empower Community first. Um, is someone from the Dolores Huerta Foundation? Yes, so, um, you know, about empowering our parents. Um, I've uh, participated in various events with uh, this organization, and it's not just about, and of course, we were able to work together to pass a resolution honoring Ms. Huerta, but it's about being able to be here for our parents, to listen to our parents, and to really empower them. And they really stood out this year as, um, a uh, partner for us who are able to organize and do just that. And I am happy to be able to say that. I'm so excited as you'll see that we have a new team of, uh, in this case, a person, but will be people uh, to be able to help us, us within the district to be able to empower our parents. And I do wanna be able to take this time to introduce to you our family and community empowerment coordinator, Ms. Pena. Stand, 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 stand. And so uh, she'll be um, uh, certainly working with uh, community groups and so forth. So if I can have the uh, uh, deputy director of the Dolores Huerta Foundation, Ms. Cecilia Castro, to come on. Thank you. Thank you so much for being able to work with us and of course with our parents as well. Thank you. Thank you. I can take a picture. Thank 
you so much. Appreciate it. And I'm not sure if if uh, he came back in, Renee. Did he come back in? No? All right. So we'll come back to this slide, slide 12. If I forget, remind me. And uh, we'll be able to recognize them as well. Uh, you know, because we were able to offer vaccination clinics to our staff, to kids 16 and over, and now we have one scheduled for June 26 for our kids 12 and over, and they, we wouldn't have been able to offer them inside, on, on site, and also with being able to have our staff train in administering COVID tests and the such if it hadn't been for them. So we'll be able to um, um, recognize them just a bit when they come back in. So we're almost halfway there, number two, right? So wow, what a year, 2020, 2021. And you know, even if our kids were at home, the work continued, the work continued here. So of course, what does that look like? Well, again, my little categories of, of uh, three, instruction. We had 85 million words read by K-8 students on my own. This is not just last year, this is only in a couple of months that kids were able to do that. Um, 3.26 million minutes, close to 600,000 sessions by K through six in Freckle. A lot of hours. 200 L students were reclassified. That's 10.8% of our English learner population. If you have a good memory, what was the last percentage that we were uh, able to measure? 1%. So we went from 1% to 10.8. Again, identifying low hanging fruit low-hanging fruit to be able to move forward. Technology, okay. Uh, Mr. Um, Varela is with us in spirit. He couldn't be here with us, but boy, was he and his team uh, at work. More than 2,000 feet of new fiber optic installed, 135 new access points, more than 10,000 technology tickets resolved, and more than 150,000 of hours of online learning by secondary students, all made possible by the technology support that we, we um, were able to um, bring forward. Going on support, more than 43,000 hours of PD. Whoever says that our teachers don't have access or support staff don't have access to learning is way off mark, and this year was proof of that. Uh, principals, just because our kids weren't here, that didn't mean that they didn't do classroom observations. They were busy doing that, over 6,000 classroom observations and walkthroughs. Of course, they had to be able to work to modify things a bit so that you'll be digitally friendly, right, to be able to do that. Uh, our special education folks continue with their IEPs because life happens. We, we need to be able to go forward. Almost 400 affirmed IEPs. And of course, we needed to make sure that our kids came to school and uh, we did more than 1,000 home visits. So a lot of manpower, a lot of dedication goes into this. And this, I could be here talking about numbers the whole day. These are just some of the ones that we wanted to share with you. Of course, staffing, we still needed, you know, uh, folks. Human resources was not taking any breaks. And we have 11 new positions just this past year. 26 uh, new staff in various positions more than 40 new employees, and almost 100 interviews. And of course, for that, we need the support of people to be able to help us with that as well. Um, budget, we've heard about one-time funds coming in. Uh, somebody has to administer, some, uh, we have to keep the reports, we have to be able to do a lot in order to process that. 40.2 million new one-time funding process close to 2,000 purchase orders processed, 37.5 million payroll processed, and we did get grant money outside of what, what is given to all of the uh, schools from the state and, and, and from the federal government, almost eight millions with that. Governance, I spoke earlier about the dedication that our board members have. Boy, was this a year of learning and they probably thought to themselves, they've never said it, but they probably thought to themselves, if, if this lady schedules another special meeting, right? Uh, or if she tells me, if, if she e emails me more information about this cool webinar, you know, that's happening. Uh, more than 100 hours of meeting time. 
21 regular board meetings, five in addition to that board study sessions, in addition to that three special board meetings, a total of 43 resolutions, and that's, those are not including those that are coming up this next week, and close to 150 hours of training. So definitely it's an investment of their time because again, we are here to be able to do better for our kids, for our staff, and for our community. Definitely a lot of things went on last year. Now, how do we go forward, right? So a lot of planning, strategy, commitment, and sustainability into the five-year plan. I wanna give you a minute to be able to read that. Quote by author Ken Bain. Now what calls out to me is that teaching occurs only when learning takes place. Teaching occurs only with, when learning takes place. And so I mentioned earlier that we are here, we're student-centered, and we have no idea who we are teaching. Future doctors, future welders, future president of the United States. You know, I mentioned earlier that between, the shortest distance between two people is a story, and I wanna tell you a story about exactly who we are teaching, right? So my first year of teaching, you know, and I still keep in touch with those kids, um, you know, because we learn together. Boy, I had no idea what I was doing, but they really helped me, right? Um, and we had fun, and I still keep up with them. So the summer of 2012, it was end of June, that my mom, um, may she rest in peace, she had a series of strokes. She was so active, always on the go, but she never did recover from her stroke. She lost the ability to speak, the ability to walk, and she was bedridden. That was not my mom because she was always up and about. So it came a time that um, she needed to make a transition uh, from the hospital and we wanted to get her home, but she still needed 24 hour care and we needed to be able to find a place for her that would have a certified nurse to be able to provide that care. And you know, we needed to find a place for her and walking into a lot of places that offer that support just broke my heart. And um, we found the best one that we could. I was still working full time. Um, I have three sisters and then my mom also has siblings uh, as well that we just help each other to schedule us around the clock so that she would never be alone. Again, I mentioned that she lost the ability to speak, so we had no idea what, how, was, how were people taking care of her, right? Um, and it was in one of those days that I would go to work from seven in the morning to like five o'clock in the afternoon. I would go to the hospital, I would be there with my mom. I still had two kids at home, go home and be able to be a mom and then get up and do it all over again, right? And so we were just um, worried that we were not going to be there at a time that my mom was gonna need us or to ensure that she was being treated right. And one day, uh, in walks a nurse, the nurse that was going to be assigned to her. And that nurse was Lori Elizondo, one of my third grade teachers. I mean, one of my third grade students. And she, you know, and, and we were asking questions, you know, has she, and, and, and she goes, Ms. Guerrero, I'm gonna treat your mom like if she was my mom. You don't have to worry about her. I met Lori when she was eight. Now here she was, a registered nurse, I think at that time she was 27. I think my kids are now in their 30s. But you never know what aspirations, what our kids are going to be able to do. And in this case, I mentioned earlier that we hold in our hearts those who are kind to our kids, but boy, did my mom needed someone at that particular time, and, that, and did I need someone to be able to reassure me that she was going to be fine. And Lori was my angel. 
she was also my third grade student. So we do have students that have dreams and they place those dreams and the parents place those hopes on us. So I wanted to share just some of our students that we have so that you can be able to know who we have. Oh, it's not showing. See, I told you they were here to help me. Thank you. So now that you've seen every tab that I have open in my laptop. I love being sports, being active, and that's just like a fun job to do. How I want my school to support me is that kids that are able to get the vaccine, that are over 12, let them like provide it for them. So like they could be more in activity groups. Say you want to be a doctor, they could take teach them how to be doctors or if you want to be a teacher you can practice be a teacher or a PE teacher like I would like to be. Um, I would I want my school to help me out by helping giving us like physical education so we can learn how to learn about the body and stuff like that. Um, I want to thank my teacher my PE teacher and all the staff because my teacher she helped me out when I was struggling during my test and homework and my PE teacher even though we were inside all stuff she still helped us out with getting exercise and still staying healthy. Um, I want to hope us all a great year for next year. It's been tough for the seeds that behind and look forward to next year. Yeah. Hi, my name is Zoe Oregon. I just submitted it and I am going to freshman. I am 14 years old and I've been here since kindergarten, so nine years of my life. I want to be something with business. I love selling and I have my own small business called Zoe Chamoy Instagram if you want to check it out. <laughs> All through my elementary and junior high years, staying here in Pioneer, I received a lot of support. That truly encouraged me to be bigger and I would love to see a public speaking class. Unfortunately, there's a lot of students that can't do public speaking and it's really hard for them, so I would love to see that. Another thing I would love to see would be uh, a business program like medical program. I would love to have a, med a business program. I'm into business and I love, I really want to see that. That'll be awesome. Um, after all these two years of being in distant learning, uh, it was a lot of, it was really difficult. Everyone was trying to learn how to do the Zooms and everything. But I'm really excited for our new chapter of going into high school, being a Panther and going in person. Hopefully we go amazing. Hello, my name is Beatriz Cabrera. I am a sophomore in high school and I have been attending schools in Parlier District for 11 years now. I am currently in the medical pathway and after I graduate, I plan to attend Fresno State and there I would like to get uh, my bachelor's in nursing and then find a job and I do plan on eventually after a lot of schooling and a lot of um, learning and a lot of practicing of course I do plan on becoming an anesthesiologist. Um, I have always wanted to be in the medical pathway and I would like to be an anesthesiologist mainly because I hate to see people suffering pain and I really want
allows people to feel a lot safer and to not feel pain while they're going through any procedures that they might have to be going to through. Here at Parlier Schools, I think that we do have a very great system and a very great pathway. Uh, I have two very great teachers who have helped me out since eighth grade, which I have been following this program and this pathway for. Uh, I do think that one thing that we could do is add a lot more skills and a lot more hands-on activities so that us students could get a lot more used to the way we do things and when it comes to actually doing our skills, you know, we're more prepared and we're not as pressured as we normally would be. I do think that it is very great that we have uh, competitions that we get to attend to, so it gets us more prepared. And it also helps us uh, attend a college uh, much easier. We do get out there and we get a lot of support from teachers. Uh, we do have very great classes that do help us um, go into detail with the things we are learning. And I think that uh, one of the main things that we would like, or that I myself would like, is just hands-on activities. We do have very great teachers. And I think um, I wouldn't ask for more than those two teachers. Uh, one of my teachers that I recently had this year, she did the most trying to help us get um, our skills going. We during this pandemic, we obviously weren't able to come to school. Some of us were, but I myself wasn't able to. So we did have to do our own mannequins, and I think that was just very great that our teacher was able to encourage us to get through those hard times, and we were able to learn a lot, even though we weren't able to attend school. Uh, that was awesome of my teachers to do that, and I think that if she continues to do that, I will become one of the best known doctors out there with both of my teachers' help. I have been following the pathway since eighth grade, and we do have dual enrollment classes, which is one of the top things that really helps us students. Um, I will be receiving 12 uh, credits or 12 dual enrollment units that will help me when I go to college, and I think that's very good. That can help a lot of students help us also get into colleges and universities. And it's a very great thing that we have a lot of classes here that do offer dual enrollment. One thing I am looking forward to for the future years would be our new medical building that we will be getting. I think it is a very great thing that we will be getting a building just for our pathway and we can have a lot more supplies and uh, something, an area where we are mainly focused on what we are learning. Um, I think we've had a lot of challenges throughout the years, but this is something that we could definitely look forward to. And I hope that other pathways, um, just like the medical pathway, can have their own buildings and have the opportunities that we will be getting. Well, for my peers, I do encourage them to follow the medical pathway, even if they're not sure of what it is they want to do. I think it's a very great pathway, and I think a lot more people aren't looking much into it because the thought of being a doctor and a lot of blood, you know, it doesn't really get to them, but there's a lot of opportunities out there for everyone, and I think a lot more people should look into it, especially with the great support and teachers we get here at the Parlier Schools. My name is Alfredo Benitez, first grade, and I'm gonna go to second grade. I wanna be a doctor and then a ninja, and then a star dancer. I wanna be a doctor because I like to help people and make them feel better. The school can help me learn. And be a doctor and a ninja and a star dancer. To be a doctor, you need to know how to write, read, and know how to, to do math. I want my school to be fun and teach me how to read and write. and do math. I want
want to be back in school so I can eat with my friends again and be able to play in the park. I want to thank my dad and the principal and my teachers because they helped me learn. So our kids have different expectations, right? I mean, some are just as basic as I want to learn to read, to write, and to do math. Others, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to deliver helping them become ninjas or stargazers, but who knows, right? Be able to say, say it out, claim it, and, uh, and the sky's the limit. So. I definitely wanted to be able to give you a perspective of who we have in our classrooms, whether they're future doctors, ninjas, whoever they are, right? We have the power to be able to impact them. And not necessarily just teachers. We have our custodians who keep our buildings uh, clean. We have um, our uh, child nutrition uh, workers that feed our kids. Everyone has um, a responsibility and a collective and part of, are part of the collective effort to be able to make that happen. So um, I always believe that we do better and better each year. So we have them in virtual reality. This time around, we will be able to have them in person You know, this, this, uh, this next time, so that's the goal. So then as far as, uh, you know, so this is where we're going in five years, right? The work that's going to be done and uh, I, I specifically wanted you to get to know who our kids are because this is based around who they are, what they need, what they want to be. And of course, the blue is highlighted because those are things that we are done, we are, uh, we are in the process of doing, and we'll be able to have complete. And I'm, I'm not gonna read through all that, but I am going, you know, I'm a math person, I like patterns and trends. I will be able to highlight some of those items as we're moving forward. Definitely, our goal is to be able to increase the quality of instruction in every classroom. So for that, we need to be able to strategize on how to be able to do that. We want our kids to be readers, not just readers, but fluent readers. We want our kids to be able to um, uh, do math. Math is an area that we need to be able to make the biggest growth in. And uh, we do want to be able to support our teachers in doing so. So definitely invest in some um, scope and sequence writing that is aligned. You know, earlier a um, ask was that we become as aligned as possible, as tender as possible, and we're working with that in the sense that we are, I mentioned earlier that we have aligned all our goals, and, and then the future goes into our student, our students are gonna have their own goals as well. They're aligned to what the district is asking um, um, site principals to be able to do as well. Um, a lot of work has been done at the site levels to be able to really look at unpacking the standards. What is it that we're teaching? And be able to really hold tight that quality tier one instruction. And of course with that is what do we need to do with tiers two and three? And that's coming along this next year. Definitely wanting to be able to iron out and communicate a teaching and learning framework. Be able to look at our data as well. We have added, uh, literacy, math, and ELD, TOSAs, teachers on special assignments, uh, um, positions for next year. The goal is to be able to align 712 math scope and sequence and start in the opposite end with the reading ELA scope and sequence in TK2. Also understanding that our kids are just not here for academics, but we wanna be able to develop the whole child. We really believe that students, we have talented students that may have an inkling for the arts, for the music. And uh, we started already on the path to be able to revamp to really strengthen our BAPA program. Being able to add art and music teachers, we just recently hired them, uh, going into being able to have them at every um, uh, elementary site throughout. And there you're able to see the sequence there that we're not stopping there. We wanna be able to have a mariachi band, a performing ensemble, a string class, a choral class, and be able to uh, move forward that continuum as well. Uh, so definitely academics, 
uh, extracurriculars, uh, sound systems as far as curriculum assessment, and again, data-driven cycle of improvement as well. We're definitely committed to giving support to sites and also being able to meet the needs of the students. In this case, that want what they're interested in because if you heard them throughout, they want school to be fun. And sometimes we have them for a lot longer than they are at home as well. So in the area of supportive environment, I mentioned earlier that we were busy in being able to uh, hire um, folks. And I mentioned earlier that the focus of the evaluation process is not necessarily, and I got you, right? But how can I support you and how can we grow with that? So definitely looking at that whole cycle of improvement so that grown folks are able to do better each and every day, each and every year as well. And then of course, to be able to look at how do we coordinate the HR aspects with the business aspect so that schools can be supported as well. If we take that through the whole uh, continuum, not only are we investing in hiring um, teachers and support staff, but we also want to invest in the growth of our administrators. How can we um, do that uh, to be able to have a system throughout? And then also, how do we grow our own? How do we invest in our students who ultimately so hard to find quality teachers out there, especially quality bilingual teachers or anything else out there. And we have them. I mean, I heard the kids speak fluent English and fluent Spanish at the graduation ceremonies. We have the kids. We just need to be able to provide the system that's going to be enhanced that as well. As far as our community, we made the first step to be able to hire someone whose focus is to empower our community and our stakeholders, and that's the first step. Then how do we coordinate forces so that it's not one against the world or a team against the world, but what is everyone doing that also has that focus and has that goal so that we can be able to partner? And of course, being able to then look at how do we continue to empower our community in the sense of the use of our bonds, the, the way that we meet uh, the needs of our students through our uh, growth and expansion in facilities. And again, I mentioned earlier that anything can come and go, right? But as far as we are concerned, we want to be able to uh, go forward, not only being able to do outdoor learning environments, but being able to look at what do we do at a gym for our junior high? What do we do for a cafeteria at a high school? What do we do with property that we own that we need to be able to develop? And then how do we meet the needs if we do have that mariachi um, band, that ensemble, where do they perform? We may need a uh, performing arts um, center as well. So we have broken it down. Of course, Mr. Rodriguez always reminds me that it takes a long time to build something, right? But it's not going to be planned if we don't start at some point, right? So a lot of the work has started in some of these projects. We're just not able to see it yet because a lot goes into the planning. I wish it was like building a house. You know, Ashley just got a house built and it took like half a year. And it's like, why can't our building stay half a year, right? But we'll be able to see them as, uh, as we go through. Definitely our um, uh, source of focus is being able to provide a gym for students at the junior high being able to look at a cafeteria for high school students, being able to look at outdoor learning environments, and being able to then see how else can we develop the um, land that we own and also how do we continue to meet the needs of our students. So a trajectory and in construction, I mean, I can, I can teach, I cannot build, right? So this is a little bit out of my element and I have to be able to trust the people that are around me to be able to take me through that. But I wanted to give you a foreshadow as to, can you keep the video going? As to what this learning environments would be. And this is the next one that we are um, more ahead in the planning system. This is the learning environment that's going to be in the quad area in the, um, at the high school, hopefully completion in spring of 2022, Renee? 2022. So, uh, we prepare a little something so you can kind of envision what it will look like. Of course, it's gonna be a whole lot better once you are there.
just a little glimpse into our future at the high school. Coming up soon. So as, uh, as part of the five-year uh, vision, we, have, um, we are going to do the research and being able to do perhaps not a, as big as, uh, as the high school um, learning environment, but an outside learning environment for all, all of our schools as well. And of course, you know, I will be um, remiss if I didn't mention the funding, right? So we are blessed to be able to have some one-time funding that is very much pertinent to outdoor learning. Uh, we also have uh, partnered with a firm that just specializes on writing grants for us and being able to keep up with those uh, grants. So um, I felt to mention that one of the grants that we're looking heavily at is being able to have one that allows for us to finally be able to have an all-weather track. So uh, some work is going to be done in that and uh, definitely will keep you posted as we are in development. Uh, certainly very excited when I first saw this video at the architect's office. I was just like, yes, when, when can we get started? Then we can do this and then we can do that. But uh, as um, I, I received my feedback from folks, people tells me, uh, you have to slow down. You have to slow down. So one thing at a time, but I did want to be able to give you a glimpse of what we're planning for the next five years. So I want to bring, be able to bring it back to the issue of partnership. You know, so this is certainly a stakeholder gathering. Uh, partnership, I mentioned earlier that we have partnered with the folks that were able to help us throughout. Uh, as I looked at what partnership means, it's usually an arrangement between two or more people who share ownership. And the thing that really got to me is in losses and profits. So we're in it for the good, we're in it for the bad. Also, it is usually involving close cooperation between parties having specified joint rights and responsibilities. So as you're here, you're in it with us, in the good and the bad, we have some rights and access to each other, but we also have some responsibilities. Now, where the rubber meets the road, you're able to have some index cards in your table, and it's asking you to write your name, the organization that you belong to, a contact information, and ways in which you will partner, knowing what a partnership is, with Parlier USD. How do you partner with us? And it's just not money, it's not time. You know, an example would be that you saw a heritage, a heritage tree that's gonna be central to the outdoor learning area at the high school. Maybe you can donate one of those trees or work together with folks to be able to donate that for us that's going to be here forever, right? So uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be now, but I would love if you could be able to leave this completed in, on, um, at the center of the table so that we can be able to reach out to you, not only as a partner, but as, as a um, person who communicates this message out to the community, out to people you work with, out to uh, people who have a vested interest, not just in our community, but in our students, and as you saw, our students have dreams. Our students want to be able to do things and they don't ask for much. But you know what, for so long, our community has been so underserved and we just took what was given to us. No more. We're going to demand what our kids deserve. We're going to demand what our community needs and merits. And we're going to be able to do it together. So we've come full circle earlier I share with you what the message that I received as I was meeting folks for the first time and the issues that came up was issues with longevity, continuity, where well, you've just seen a five-year plan. Issues with accountability. I said earlier, if we say it, we're accountable. It's out there in the universe already. Ask me about all the different plans that we have that we have showed you every time you see me. How are we coming along with the quad? How's that all weather track happening? How are those scores coming up? Hold me accountable. But you know what? All of us are accountable because it does take a village to be able to raise a child. And we're raising 3,444 of them. Trust. You have to earn trust, right? And it takes a while but you earn trust by being able to deliver on what you say you're going to do. So not only am I asking you to hold me accountable to that, 
I'm asking you to be able to hold yourself accountable for that as well. Family and community, there was a need there. We wanted, people said that they wanted us to be able to communi communicate with the community. Well, you just saw that we're adding a department specifically just for that. And our, our strategic communication plan, every Friday, staff knows that they hear from me. Transparency, that's the backroom deal. You just saw all the plans that we talk about. Nothing's hidden. You saw our scores, it is what it is. There's no need to hide anything. It's there, ask. If I have an answer, I'll give it to you. If I don't have an answer, I'll also tell you, I have no idea. Student achievement. I purposely didn't put goals for student achievement in the um, Vision 25 because I don't believe in cramming for tests. I don't believe in intervention, intervention, intervention. We are currently right now mostly in an intervention district. And we should be because 86% of our kids are not passing the test. I mean, we are putting the Band-Aid that we need, right? It's a big Band-Aid. We need to become a quality first instruction district that those numbers flip and the best instruction happens within the four walls of our classroom. So if we put everything that we say with the support of the teachers, with the scope and sequence, with the focus on literacy, with the focus on math, with being able to have a music program, if we do all that, scores will come. Scores will come. And they're not going to be a one-time thing. It's gonna be a lasting thing because our kids are going to achieve and we will have those accomplished students that we set out to be able to have. So coming full circle, in the 10 months, in probably a year and a half of COVID, everybody has been doing work. And boy, has that time given us time to think. And whenever we have time to think and plan, it's dangerous, especially when you have a collective board. I always tell my board members, you know, we come and we talk about three things, and I leave with about 10 things to do on my list, right? Because, oh, you wanted to do this, and we need to do this, and we need to do this. You talk about me going fast, you should hear our conversations as well. So I definitely wanna be able to thank you for being here today. I usually over plan. I think I stuck pretty close to the 10 o'clock this time. Um, we do um, have to be able to say to just like your marketing. I know a lot of you don't use social media, but you know what? If no one knows about it, it didn't happen. So, uh, my administrators, I will be holding you a little more accountable later in the day to do and to post on social media. Right now, if you do have a social media account, we have some time, and I have no idea what time it is, but before 10.30, at, at 10.30, we're gonna make the shift to the um, afternoon for just the administrators, so we have some time for you to make use of the backgrounds, of the flower arrangements, of the balloons, take selfies, do whatever, you post, use the hashtag PUSDVision25 so that we're able to see um, who is uh, posting and what is trending as well. And don't worry, if you have no idea how the hashtag trend is, someone at your table knows, okay? So with that, thank you, thank you from the bottom of my heart uh, for giving me the opportunity board to serve this community. I am humbled and honored to serve as your superintendent of schools. And let's look at this group doubling next year. Uh, I will give you a save the date, maybe about three or four months before. And we'll see what um, I'm able to share with you that we uh, do in 2021, 2022. And of course, the board will probably have asked me to add another year to the Vision 25. So uh, have high expectations, but definitely expect us to be able to deliver in uh, um, a lot of those. But you know what? Our kids deserve it. Our community does deserve it. And our staff needs to win. Our staff needs to win. So with that, have a good rest of your day, except our administrators that are staying behind. Uh, there's coffee, there's water, there's pan. Please eat the pan. If not, I'm going to eat it. And please, Hashtag PUSD Vision 25. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it.